Hello everyone and welcome back to Wargame Red Dragon. We have an absolute doozy of a game today. It was everything I absolutely adore and love about this game. Thrown into one, rolled through a meat grinder, made into a cheeseburger, and then unfortunately devoured head to toe. So if that's not a weird enough intro for you guys, I don't know what is, but we are on the way and it's South Africa motorized. I have all of my points in one basket headed up to Juliet trying to make a move here. And before we get really into the meat of it, I just want to say our opponents, well played, N7 Talon, Bison, and Massapom, including the Lieutenant Colonel Bison. I mean, they had a lot of experience. It was a really tough game, a really good grind, and always a pleasure. I'd be happy to play with any one of them again, and hopefully do. And, uh, well, I'm sure the results will be will be another good, fierce contest. So, right in the opener, we have a lot of cluster artillery coming down and pounding the hell out of my allies' opener here. Automatic STRFs, M41A1s, all that jazz caught in a double stack of cluster artillery. As my stuff is just making it past here, a couple of THS MI-28s taking fire from a Cactus Sov. You can tell, I think he was a little bit distracted right here because they weren't really pulled back. But the uh, MI-8Ts on this side are just trying to set down, and I'm thinking, okay, if I can kill them right before they set down, I have stuff in these buffles that can take care of it. The Ruakats can hit things on the ground, and please don't let them set down right before I get there, but they do. And that's infantry, that's LSTR-40, and that's two dead Ruakat 76s as the rest of this column encounters a Red 4 column right in the middle of the field, and I do a really sloppy job here. I'm not unloading well, I'm not getting my infantry into the fight, I'm not allowing them to use their guns, and then spreading out, and for God's sake, spread out when you do this sort of thing. Otherwise, this is nearly 800 points, and it's getting hit by a Flampanzer, and that's not the worst of it, ladies and gentlemen, because here comes a bomber. And it's a lot, a lot, a lot of bombs. Huge bombs as well, and this is my entire opener, and there it goes. <laughs> so, I was sitting there going, uh, um, this is, this, this could be going better, guys. <laughs> We have, I mean, we have Caspiers up here, we have Bulk Up 90 up there, we have a hole on this side, but Panic Ass was also a little bit struggling in the middle here, and then with the amount of just hammering that got done on the left-hand side, I was trying to recover. I have Bogomach, I have some pair of Pathfinders, but they don't have the armor piercing they need to take out this Flame Panzer, so the next time he gets his gun online, it's going to hurt, and keep hurting, and keep, keep, keep hurting. You can see SASF and Bulk Up do have a nice encounter with some Moat Shoots in 90, and I'm cycling the Caspiers back, getting infantry forward to keep those vehicles safe, and we're gonna try and salvage the Juliet push by going through the woods and getting a forward position on that high ground there, maybe overlooking Gulf, maybe seeing if we can cut off some reinforcements and help out Panic in the center, but this is a whole big Red 4 column coming in, one, two, three kills right there, as I think this was even just a helicopter in the back taken out as well, and we are getting pushed on the left side as well, so you can see, nice hold in the center from Panic, I have got a forward position, but it's one that's in a lot of danger here on the right-hand side, and our left is getting blown through. Through no fault of uh, Cripplings, by the way, that beginning artillery salvo was just really deadly. Buccaneer coming in, trying to screen out a couple of those heavy tanks, but unfortunately we lost line of sight just before we can get a couple of missiles off. Makes it a 90-point dead buy, not exactly my favorite thing, but at least their position is known, and we will have a couple of Paladins from Panic shooting in when they get the chance. Flampanzer from Massapum again, and my SSF are getting absolutely shredded, so the Napalm providing a stun, and then other vehicles at the back, and you can see my bow cop moving out and back and around, trying to stay away from that deadly, literal fire. Oh joy, this is going to be a bit of a long run, so we're going to speed through some things as we get up into this game. Moderna and Asava spotted on the left-hand side, SCRV-103D won't be enough to stop them, and the Rover RBS is just... He's run out of front line to keep him safe, so that is a little bit rough. Buccaneer coming in, but Evac ordered him trying to stay away from that Lazar, and I'm also buying a command vehicle for Bravo because, well, one of the ways when you have a really rough game, a really rough opener that you can, can apply pressure if you're careful, is by getting some ticking war scores. So that's what I was hoping for, if we can cap Bravo, get that plus one, and then maybe salvage the situation in Charlie, get it back to even, and then we'll have benefited from a little bit of a delay, because Juliet still has not been capped. Pair of Pathfinders sparring with some Mochutsen, and they get good kills, honestly. I mean, this is pretty nice. They're way outnumbered, and the Mochutsen just three to one right there, but the Y2 frag rounds, unfortunately, not quite able to get a kill before my Pair of Pathfinders get stunned and absolutely shredded by way more forces they can ever deal with. Bergamoth, meanwhile, do get killed by a KPZ, and now I've lost any and all hold that I had on the right side of the board. But uh, Crippling is asking for help, and after all the times he's helped me in this game, I felt like that should be something that we really focus on. So a couple of Retzel 20 buys, trying to get infantry up here, and I did see them Derna, 
But here's the thing about Bull Cop 90. Let's see if we can take a look at the stat card. That's going to be 23 AP power, 10 rounds a minute, 60% accuracy. It's not amazing. It's no Apple loss or anything like that. But they can do good work. And the Buccaneer from the right-hand side is now over on the left, trying to make sure that Moderna is not having too good of a time. I do have to be a little bit worried about 4 day A. But this is our side of the board, and that is something that was keeping me relatively safe from enemy fighters. And for 1A1, screening out some proletariat as they were hoping to, you know, to chase down my Rattle BV, but uh, caught out in the open, and that's going to be a bad day for them. Here's the Moderna and my Buccaneer just out of position, trying to circle around to get that hit again. One missile away on an Oat, which was kind of just not great, and not even able to hit it because of the turning radius of the missiles, I think. Second Moderna, so there's not one, there are two, right here. This close to Alpha, this close to our spawn, and that is incredibly dangerous. L18, meanwhile, does take a dive in for the Buccaneer and gets him. So I was a little bit lax on my fighter defense, and I ended up paying for it as the L18 gets out with a nice 90-point kill as a souvenir. Book up 90, trying to push up a little bit more, but that MiG-25 RBF coming in once again. Down he goes, really accurate bombing from that player the entire game. It was quite, quite a nuisance. So... Right now, about the only thing holding on this side is a Leopard 185 NO2 and, and a couple of Bokop, and we're really in some trouble as our Buccaneer did get killed, and now, I mean, that's the Moderna for you. Down goes the NO2 and single shot, right? This guy's still at two strength, not really the best amount of strength remaining, and a couple of Fennec Toe 2s do manage to get the kill there. It's a nice kill for us. It's the first way back into this game, but you can see mechanized forces making it all the way up here onto our side of the field, and we have to fight them out, we have to grind them out, and Rattle 20 is South Africa in general, not good at the grind. My Rattle 20 is get a little bit over enthusiastic, and I lose one of them. 15 points gone right there, just some Proletary 90, that I should be engaging with Bulk Up 90 to sort of wear them down through sheer numbers. And we do that eventually, but it would have been nice to save 30 points because these guys have practically paid for themselves. Yeah, they did already. SDRF 94 is on this side, and I wish they'd stayed a little bit closer in Bravo protecting the Rattle BV because if they leave, we have nothing between the Rattle BV and that town, which is occupied by Red 4 forces. In the meantime, Panic Asp is still holding. That's Pivads is spotted. I'd like to see it move back. The gun is off, but that doesn't help you if they can still see where you, where you are. You don't need a seed plane to get that kill. As a couple of T-55 AM-1 PPs. <clears throat> oh, jeez. My voice just cracked. Holy shit. Anyway, a couple of KPZs are able to get direct fire, and I mean, Pivads is alive more through luck than anything else. So, Rover does get a nice kill, and it's nice that he was still salvaged, still able to get a couple of missiles online, as there are more attack markers here, and now SASF-90 and more Bokov-90 are leading the way. Wow, I got a little bit overexcited about this game, didn't I? Huh. Yeah, I guess that's, uh, that means it's a good one anyway, at least from my perspective. Ruvalk is bought here, and this was my solution to the Buccaneer dying, is just to get something a little bit more reliable, kind of like the Fennec Toe 2s that had the good success against that first Moderna, and really just use them as a screening force. But we can see the second Moderna and missile on the way. Oh, ugh. not quite enough. Fennec Toe 2 does get a missile in. It's a hit, but not a kill. And the Bokup 90 and Rattles are trying to get around a flanking position here. If I was, I was thinking, you know, if the Rattles can get up onto the road and fend off reinforcements there, at least slow them down then we might have more of a chance of grinding forward and getting somewhat of recovery in this game. But they do get taken out, and that Moderna is just sitting there in the back laughing at all of my vehicles that I tried to move up to get that position. Book up 90, engaging more Proletary, and this is a better engagement for Proletary than fighting against Proletary 90, because these guys are 15 points shock, they do the job, and they do the job slightly better than Book up 90 that don't have their similar training. So, SASF are making it up here into the town, and I thought... This is a good thing as well, if we can secure this town, if we can really sort of fend off the Red 4 player a little bit better on that side. M41A1 shooting in at a Sava, and this sort of does let you know that we're having an impact, because the Red 4 player Bison here thought this was his back line. This is a Lieutenant Colonel um, fighting against Crippling on the left, and that's an expensive kill. It's an expensive kill managed with a really cheap, uh, cheap unit of our own. That's exactly what you want to do when you're trying to solve an asymmetrical situation. So, MI-17 moving up, but this is what the SASF-90 are for. They just have to scooch a little bit forward and we might be able to get some shots on. Rattle 20 sparring with Drozminski, and that is something. That looks like a Moderna to me, ladies and gentlemen. And unfortunately, down goes my Rattle 20, but the Ruvalk does see him, and that's the first missile online and a hit. Down to two strength, but I'm trying to dodge other stuff. Neva Mitt getting a shot in on something. Not quite sure what, but we get the kill. The Ruvalk takes that guy down 
and that's a really expensive loss for the Red 4 player. Both of his Modernas taken out in this forward engagement. That had to not really be what he was looking for, and even if it's taking a combined approach, my enemy on this side, Masapom, with those nice bombers and the nice uh, crumpling of my initial push, really kind of failed to capitalize it on it up to this point. So a couple of trackers are all that's standing between him and Foxtrot, but when this MI2 sort of scooched forward, I started thinking to myself, you know, he's probably thinking about an offensive, he's probably being told by Bison right now, that there was a lot of my stuff over here. And that does give him a little bit of a window. You can see the SASF-90 do get their kills. Six of those Stinger missiles used and put to very good use indeed. As Dragoner are moving forward, we now have some direct fire on the road and a couple of Casper K cars and Buffles moving forward as well. I'm hoping to resecure Charlie. You can see I've marked that. A little bit hard to see my name there, but that is my attack marker into Charlie because recovering the road is one thing, but if we want to get back into this game, we need to secure this zone. We've been, we've been losing a plus one for a while now. Unfortunately, our cap into Bravo happened around the same time as their cap on their side of the field as well, and that cluster already is now targeting a couple of mortars from Panic Asp, which I mean, that does add up. They're 40 points apiece. It's a nice 160 point stack there, so that's not nothing. KPZ is headed down the pipe, but a longbow is there to intercept, and I can only hope he stays safe from those flat comms. But they don't really have the best range against helicopters, I mean 2800 is no slouch, but the uh, SFL on the back is really the main threat, and I think the longbow did see him and he's moving back, so a really, really prolonged engagement there, as even light riflemen are getting in on the job. But my Caspiers are around the side, my Buffles are around the side, Caspiers providing some fire as the Buffles just bring infantry in, I really want to clear this whole section and I know I need the infantry in these buffaloes to do it. So, Casper K cars, meanwhile, are going around the left. The intention is to drop off some special forces on this side, fend off helicopters, fend off heavy vehicles, and meanwhile, clear the top ground with just waves of infantry, and then work our way back to the woods. You can see Proletary 90 are not going to be loving engagement against three individual units of Bokop 90, and the buffaloes back there support their twin M1919. So, we are somewhat, somehow, some way, ever so slightly recovering in this game, and I think there were a couple of really nice valuable kills back here, that's why I'm looking in so closely at it right now. SASF-90 trying to secure the bridgehead, as a scout defender does help as well, but Super Gallop coming in, and that's going to be shots in and a kill on the Leopard 185 and 02, as my Caspiers get up and around, and it should be just about here, ladies and gents, I do apologize, I'm looking for something, and it's easy to remember generally where it is, but uh, it's been a while since this game was played, and uh, I think it was just right about now. So M84AN takes one on the chin from the LRAX from the SASF, and that's four points of damage, but not a kill, unfortunately, as he does retreat chased by a couple of K-cars, because I, well, I intend to overshoot my opponent's estimation of my own madness. And here's a Neva Mitt. There's a second Neva Mitt. One, two, right side by side, taking fire from Buffles, of all things, and we might just be able to get with kills. If we're lucky, Bokop's trying to move in, using those, uh, FT-5 rockets, and I think it was actually SASF on the other side. That's one Neva Mitt down. We should see that charred corpse. Uh, no, that's actually a resupply vehicle. There he is, one and two. And let's see what actually gets it there. <laughs> I think it's... Is it the K-Cars? Nope, SASF get one kill, and auto cannons get the other, either the Caspiers or the CV-9030 ends. But here is the push that I was afraid of on the right-hand side, and Masapam has come in in force. Moat shoots in 90 everywhere, 20-point shock infantry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 original double groups at least, backed up by Flam Panzers, backed up by even some resupply up here just to sort of keep them healthy, and I was just barely able to get Bokop and SASF into the towns in time. But this is really why you need some artillery, particularly when you're pushing this position. I found this huge, huge section of town is really easy to defend, and moat shoots are dying left and right. Well, yeah, I have lost some trackers, but my SASF are relatively healthy, my Bokop are relatively healthy, and the moat shoots are taking it right on the chin. And you know, they got around, they're getting some fire onto my fire support vehicles, but it's not enough. They're panicked, they're shaken, I'm retreating back, making sure I can use those autocannons at range, and the Ruhlkot 76 is getting direct fire on their Spichel Alf Clotter and the Flampanzers coming in are taking some hits from the Light Light from a 90, and that's going to be a really, really, really expensive push. One way of getting us back in the game, as Charlie is now recovered, if not captured, and we're trying to get up and forward into Echo. SASF 90, unfortunately, out of Stingers, but a K car trying to shoot in on a Hera 2, of all things, so, you know, why not, right? XTP 1 Beta 90 coming in, and that's going to be some nice kills against Flampanzers. 
as, uh, nope, never mind. There's LSTR up on the high ground, and this is a nice target for Panic Asps and Marines, assuming that they don't get stunned and stopped right here. This was so close, but uh, that's going to be some artillery coming in and a lot, a lot, a lot of Marines in pain as MI-8Ts get their rocket pods online. So it's not for free. These are not the cheapest, oh geez, helicopters, and Cactus Sov did manage to get both of them, so there's at least some trade. But US Marines 90 are 30 points a pop, so that whole push is 120 points of infantry getting really kind of roadblocked here. It's kind of surprising. Bogomach are brought up. I have lost most of the Bokop, all of the trackers. SASF are still healthy at 18 men. And this is really why you get those 25 point elite squads. They're, they don't have a tertiary, but holy cow if that Vector R5 isn't doing some good work. Meanwhile, Bogomach are just there to fill in some bodies. Caspier Kcar up and around. A big push coming in now from Crippling Depression and, you know, my SSF on the sides as well, supporting. We're trying to get into Echo. We do need to get on the move because we are down nearly 150 points. You can see Speed Shell off Clover dying to Bogomach. That is a horrible, horrible day. I mean, this is the same amount. It's 20 points of Bogomach, 20 points of Speed Shell off Clover. <laughs> oh, jeez. Hurukat 76, sparring with T-72M1, and that is going to go in the T-72's favor. My Hurukat's not quite able to get out of dodge, and a bit of a mistake. I was trying to overchase a little bit, I think, but I have another one back here, and at least that does still defend this zone. There is artillery coming in, and I think it's counterfiring at the Paladins, more than likely. They have been here for a very long amount of time, but actually stopping short and going after these mortars should be... yeah, oof. Two of them dead, two of them still remaining, but we'll see for how long. As M41A1s and Dragoner are leading the way, taking out a little bit, but now we know where their infantry are. Dragoner on that side of the woods, and we might just be able to get some good engagements here. Yastrib coming in. This is an interesting choice, um, but I mean, if the Lieutenant Colonel is using them, I'm assuming they are good. Um, unfortunately, they're also very slow, and automatics just love slow planes. They really do, because those autocannon rounds from the automatic, is it even that, honestly? It's, uh, what, 76 millimeter rounds? Yeah will just mulch any sort of slow-moving plane that stays in their line of sight long enough. But there has been good forward motion from Panic Aspen Center as well. Light Riflemen and U.S. Marines up really far forward. And we saw there was a lot of pressure coming in from N7 Talon earlier, and most of it has been rather artfully taken out. So there was a lot of anti-air. Seems to be that Light Rifleman 90 solved that problem pretty well. And now we have Bokup, SASF, and Caspiers moving forward, trying to secure it. So here's the key to Echo when you're on this side. One, two bridgeheads. People very rarely come across this side because whoever's here is going to be engaging on the straightaway, and they don't really always have points to spare or the coordination to move into Echo. So if you can secure this bridgehead, and you can push toward this bridgehead, Echo becomes an absolute pain in the ass for the Red 4 player to retake. The issue is getting there in the first place, and that's not easy. But it is something that I hope to show you guys today is possible. So. We have a Super Gallop coming in again, and that's a dead cb 9030 n This guy's been getting a lot of chip kills with that. I mean, it's an expensive plane, so he needs them, but what, two NO2s, that's going to be 140 points. He's already paid himself off, so why not get the kills that you can on top of it? So, double M1 Abrams, and this is very nice pressure. I mean, they're not the most aggressive tanks. You can definitely see that the range in AP is going to be a problem here, but they have so much armor that these T-72s are at least not getting kills right away, and that means that other supporting elements like the Light Rifleman, Light Rifleman 90, and then sheer numbers, can do some good work. One of them does get taken out, two of them taken out there, and the T-72S1 background, uh, backbone is... This is rough. You need kills, you need shots in from close, and I mean, these M1s can't even shoot through the armor until right there. That's how bad their gun is, but, uh, I mean, it is what it is, right? 18 frontal armor is no slouch, 13 AP gun, really not the best, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. A couple of M8 AGSs sort of behind the M1 Abrams would have been very, very impactful. Woke up on this side are clearing out Proletary. We're looking for the command vehicle on Echo, not able to find it just yet. It's probably over on the right-hand side. Um, that's sort of a safer bet than the left-hand side for this sort of thing, because, I mean, from the Red 4 player's perspective, if there is going to be work coming in on this side, it's going to be most dangerous here, and that was embarrassing. So my Buffalo, my Rattle BV, rather, spotted, taken out just before the woods, by that same flipping Super Gallop. That's 125 points of sadness on my end. Nighthawk coming in, and let's see how these tanks do with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. At least a couple kills there, and some panic, some damage. I think actually one was killed, I'm not entirely sure. Yep, there he is. Dead tank, very much not happy. But uh, it wasn't for free, unfortunately, so that Nighthawk 
is um, paying the price and it's going to take a long time to come back in. L18, seaplanes, Yastribs, you can see Bison really leaning on the air power here. And I do have to kind of question that a little bit. I mean, far be it for me as a sergeant to question the lieutenant colonel, but he's losing a lot of planes. And even if they get good kills, and that's an if, they're running into a ton of anti-air. SASF can take out things in, in just sheer numbers that you wouldn't expect. And he really needed some more stuff on the ground. So we have more artillery coming in once again, and it looks like the Paladins have been counterfired a little. Kind of lucky that they didn't die, to be honest. But um, you know, sometimes luck is a big player in this game, and it's one that we need, as most of Panic Asp's forward position has unfortunately been taken out. That M1 Abrams push wasn't quite enough to get the work done. Just the sound, by the way, was an accidental moving of the Rattle BV back here. My fault. So uh, we didn't really lose the cap. Here comes another couple bombers. Now Masapalm is helping on this side, trying to prevent Echo from falling, but we do manage to take him out. SASF and the Ruakant ZAHVM get rid of that bomber finally, but again, not for free. So a lot of losses. You can see my goal is this first bridgehead. SASF on this side, M41 DK1 spotting, and now we have recon and we have punch on that side. Uh, a little bit overclustered the SASF, to be honest. Don't need to be all in the same group there. We could kind of spread out a little bit. I'll be a little bit better. But uh, hey, I'm not a perfect player either, so I make plenty of mistakes. Right now what I'm trying to do is get some Rattle 20 Milans. These are no longer in the deck that I'm aware of, but my whole idea with them was basically you take the Rattle 20 Milans, standard Milan F1s, and then inside are standard Milans. And then for 30 points you get, well, I mean 60 points rather, you get four Milan ones, which if nothing else, looks really scary to drive into. So, SASF getting some of their Strellas online, but only one Strella left, and that's two attack helicopters not able to unfortunately get those kills. Now my SASF are in the open, not where they want to be as a Yastrib comes in and gets a little bit of revenge there. No, Gun's actually not able to get online, and that's another kill chalked up for the automatic. No. Oh, geez. Lots of plot twists. I thought that plane died. <laughs> But uh, just able to get away. Better lucky than good sometimes. There were three or four shots there at the end that just straight missed. And, uh, well, sometimes you roll some bad numbers. Seaplane coming in again, but nice micro on the automatic. The gun is off and therefore not able to get the kill. And uh, LSTR 40s are sort of isolated in the open. Caster K cars will mulch infantry in the open. And these guys are very expensive. You can't afford to keep doing this. Uh, running into auto cannons. It's just, it's really rough. The Flame Panzer back there will have slightly better luck. In the center, the reinforcements from the Milans and Rattle 20 Milans, as well as some SASF on this side, are securing our hold between Foxtrot and Bravo, and the Command Infantry have been found by some Falstrom Jaeger 90. They will not get away from that engagement, so that does mean we will finally, with 15 minutes, well, 16 minutes left in this game, finally begin to get some taking points, right as another Rattle BV gets in here, and we go from zero, not to plus one, but straight to plus two. So. My Rattle 20 Milans were trying to support as some light riflemen were going forward. A bit of a mistake. We really should have just held here. The Milan teams are not reliable enough to get kills, and they are very, very fragile. We do get something up on the high ground, but I have no idea what it is, and we lose even more to the Super Gallops and these KPZ T72 S1s. That's a bit of a mouthful, really. Yeah. I mean, as soon as your opponent knows they're just Milan 1s, they're not really going to be that scared of it. So the, the value in looking scary comes from being able to back it up with something else. So you flood the field with cheap ATGMs, and then you have one of them in there that has some punch, but we didn't quite have that. Kamp Schwimmer on this side, and I did unfortunately lose a helicopter to some negligence. Um, yeah, not a good play. So, I mean, this was a hard game, right? So I have positions over in Fox, I have positions over in Juliet, and I'm all the way over on the other side in Echo as well. So I was playing sort of back like this from time to time just to make sure that nothing went wrong. and it was a little bit beyond my skill to do it perfectly. So, trackers are just insurance against any sort of flanking maneuver on this side, amphibious vehicles coming down the pipe. That would have been a disaster in a game that we were finally, well, I thought anyway, getting back into. SASF on this side still able to use those LRACs, and it looks like another heavy tank will be paying the price as, I mean, the LRACs 19 AP right to the face. You do it enough times and, well, nothing's going to have a great time with it. More seed planes and the ZAHVM is turned off just for just for a second as the IHOC takes him down and then the gun's back on and we're taking shots into the Super Gallop, finally able to get revenge on that plane for killing my Rattle BV. I was very happy with that. I mean, a little bit of micro goes a long way with Radar AA and that rhymed way more than it was ever intended to, for which I do apologize. Another Super Gallop from Bison and it looks like this is probably, I think you get two maximum, so downvoted Super Gallops. 
But they get an M3A2 Bradley IFE, that's 80 points worth of kills off a single run, that was quite a lot. C plane on this side isn't really going to find many targets, we have mostly infrared AA, that's the Cactus Sobs and the SASF. I mean, it's a wide field of anti-air, it's just not as capable as the higher performance um, higher performance guns. SASF-90 and more reinforcements in Casper Mark IIs, and yeah, I'm, I'm sort of losing my ability to micro at this point, so I brought them all in just quad stacks and really should be splitting them up right here. These are para pathfinders and their entire their entire purpose is anti-infantry. Unfortunately we did get sort of pounded by artillery on this side. My ZAHVM didn't get killed. He's actually farther up on here. I wanted more of a forward anti-air presence and this position was getting to be sort of well known. But para pathfinders will shred through proletary and even though we did take a couple of losses, once those Y2 frag launchers get online it's just it's a massacre. And the stun is just because these guys, proletariat are good. They're they're good for a reason. So, Samuel Cargo coming up, and this is where I probably should have split and moved out of the way. Unfortunately, now I do lose the ZAHVM because my micro did falter again. Uh, this is a chaotic game, and I have I have things all across the entire front. It was honestly a little bit too much. Um, but, you know, if you never push yourself, you're never going to get any better. And I certainly do want to get better, so I was pushing myself as much as I could. And... I think honestly, this particular game, it made a decent difference. So Proletary moving forward again, I'm moving the para pathfinders in to try and take them out as SASF-90 will get overwhelmed just because, I mean, they have the tertiaries, but look at that. 16 men left, Y2 frag rounds do amazing, amazing work, and I just have to hope that we kill all three of those before there's more retribution in store. Flampons are on this side, Moat Troops 90, and we're starting to lose our infantry presence on this side. Samuel Cargo pushed a little too far forward, trying to get to the SASF, but that's uh, Flampanzer has another thing in mind. Look at that. Whole area denial. We get the kill, but at what cost? And um, I don't know. This was just, it was the cost of reinforcing other fronts, right? So I have more infantry on this side. We have Caspeters on this side. They didn't have the micro to unload. Trackers over here trying to prevent some sort of flanking maneuver and just wasn't able to keep up the constant stream of infantry to this side. Part of that's because these guys are very expensive. Pair of Pathfinders are 30 points a pop. But they've gotten a fair number of kills, so, you know, they're getting hammered, I should probably pull them back, but I wanted vision on this side as well, and I was willing to do pretty much anything at the time to, to get it, even if that means walking into artillery. Hindsight, not a great idea, don't walk into artillery, I promise it's not a good experience. Double stack of M1 Abrams taken out by Cluster, and that really hurts as well. So, the double stacked M1s, I think, probably a little bit of a crutch for Panic that we need to move away from, but... He's a newer player, we've played against each other a couple times, he suffered from that KT rush, and then we played on the same team, because never let it be said that I only look for uh, for newer opponents, I also love any ally I can get, and honestly I think some of the best improvement comes from when both players on a team, or in this case all three, wind up a little bit over their heads. And you can see all fonts are moving up, I'm trying to get the heavier armor and, I mean, decent gun up here, but this call-in was way before. So that call-in was before we lost that position, and now my Oliphant has to deal with an M84AN that he was never intended to at close range, right? We were going to have infantry fending that off. Fortunately, another plane kill by these EOTS IHawks, but uh, there's there's more meat there than we can really take. And we do get the M84AN kill, which was really just because he was distracted. That has right there paid for my own tank, I mean, and a couple points extra. But I was really scared of these guys. I mean, they're 120-point tanks to begin with. Really no slouch at all. And my Oliphant Mark 1B is not even the optimum. This is a 60 point, not the 80 point. Isn't enough to take it. So I've marked a defense marker here as Dragoner are not going to be enough to handle Moat Schutzen, two Moat Schutzen without good micro from the ML1 3Gs. But unfortunately, they are stunned and unfortunately, SPW 80s are backing up the Moat Schutzen just like these 113 Gs are backing up the Dragoner. There's the kills and immediate response from us, but my Rattle BV needs to move and needs to move now if he's going to stay alive. So, L18 circling on that side, and you can see there's a big coordinated push, Bison and Masopom trying to recover Echo. I mean, the only thing I'll say, having two players in the same zone is, it's just going to turn things into a bloodbath for everybody. It's not going to stress both sides of the field like you really want to be doing. We haven't seen an offensive from me or from Masapom in or around Juliet in a while, and for my side it was out of necessity. We were losing in Charlie, and then we were trying to secure Echo for his. The whole time we were losing Charlie, he had the initiative, and I think there could have been a lot done with that That's um, that would have helped the Red 4 players stay ahead in this game, because right now we're up 238 points, 240 points to 150, and 
even if we lose Echo, and that is an if, because we still have an automatic, we still have my Rattle BV right here, just out of dodge, and reinforcements are coming up and through. Even if we lose Echo, that gives them a zero, and if we can get a plus one going anywhere, well, actually, yeah, decap that gives us a plus one, but even if they recap it, that's zero, zero. They need better than that, and there's only seven minutes left in the game for them to possibly get that done. Double stack of T-72S1s, my Rattle BV is running, trying to get farther away from those big heavy tanks. As Parapathfinders are not able to take that out, I was hoping to engage the infantry, and unfortunately I get engaged by a whole bunch of armor. So these guys, not the right tool for the job. Always respond with the right tool, never impulsively. If you respond impulsively, you'll look like I did just there, throwing things away for no gain whatsoever. Motshoots 90 moving this side, Dragoner moving to intercept, and my Rattle BV just trying to be a sneaky goose actually so I'm, I'm i'm trying to make them go where the hell is that command vehicle it has to be here it has to be there it has to be somewhere and we actually re-secure echo for just a bit popping us back up to plus two for as long as i can keep that thing alive unfortunately that is a counter cap so you know it, it's messy and bison lieutenant colonels will very rarely be denied the entire time it's just a matter of if you can deny them long enough Bogomach moving up to give more bodies as my XTP-1 Beta-90 is hoping to use those Ingways to kill these 120 point tanks. And a couple of the Ingways have already been fired, we've gotten a couple of nice kills, but my Rattle BV does go down, and now Echo is recapped for the Red 14. So, Cluster Artillery coming in, and Beacon 1C is rather suffering for it, I think this will just left there a little bit long. I always have to move that, because enough Cluster will get through, so, I mean... Even if it doesn't get the kill there, that B-can is panicked, his firing, ra uh, firing radius now is gigantic, to the point of uselessness. So, even if it does not a kill, it is certainly disabled for quite a while. Panic 20mm is chasing a little bit far, Beta 90 completely out of ammunition, moving back and trying to resupply as more and more reinforcements flood through that gap. And I'm also trying to sort of stem the bleeding on this side as well, as you can see, Paladin's getting nice kills up on the high ground, those LSTR getting absolutely smacked. But there's an M91, a V-Core on this side, my SASF have been using a fair amount of their tertiaries fending off planes and and helicopters, excuse me, and the seaplanes coming in as well, just making our life living hell. But uh, Block 15 might be able to get some revenge, looks like a trade there into the Red 4 planes, but L18 also goes down to a rover. Never underestimate these guys. Everyone, when they look at Scandinavia, they see the automatic, and then they stop looking. That's a mistake. Rovers are... What, for what you're paying for, really, really good. 2800 meter range against helicopters, 2240 against airplanes, 55 accuracy, 4HE. It's a nice package and it's on wheels. It can be places you don't expect faster than you ever expect it to move. Sava is spotted. Here are those T-72s again. Moat shoots in, moving forward, and I lose all of my Bogomach. And, well, they kind of did their job, but it, it wasn't much of a job anyway. Uh, this is an interesting choice. These guys, 35 point resupply helicopters are way too close, and the rovers are just taking pot shots. It'll take a couple of hits to get through them because of the 8 strength, but not that many, and you can't really afford that sort of thing. SCSF 90 moving back, there's a reason for that. I wanted these ATGMs from the Apache from Panic Asp to do to really lead the way, and he does get a very nice kill there. And M91 AV cores are not cheap. That's the 170 point big boy right there. And. Yeah, this is this is a grind. This is really just a grind. False Jaeger, Northern Zager should not be force path through uh, Napalm like this. That really limited their effectiveness because otherwise Motschutzen should lose the False Jaeger, and it just it didn't end up being that way. So Flampanzer is really showing their strength this match. That's one of the takeaways I'd say. I mean, I can never use them well, but uh, that certainly doesn't stop my opponents from doing that every once in a while, and sometimes that's because I rely too much on brute force, so I freely acknowledge that. Valkyrie getting some shots in, I wanted those LSTR dead, and if not dead, at least useless for a while. So double stack of Valkyrie, really better for panicking things than killing things, but um, I mean, it, w it was some way to keep my opponents busy here in the last three minutes of this game as we're hoping to eke out a win. It's not a win by getting to 500, but it might just be enough. Oh, no. Poor SASF. Two groups are healthy, two groups really not, so I split them up and we move the healthy groups forward, trying to get those LRACs online. A couple of good contacts as well, so if we can keep chasing them. Keep in mind too, SASF have wheels for shoes. 30 kilometers per hour speed is really just incredibly fast. We take out a Flampanzer, and that's pretty nice, and we're screening out the tanks, so that will allow other reinforcements to come through kind of okay. Rattle 20 is up around the side. I was hoping to get a nice sneaky kill, and we do, I think, take down a support vehicle on that left-hand edge of Echo. 
It's not going to be enough to recap the zone, but it is enough to keep them from pushing into Charlie with only a couple of minutes remaining. So, double stack of flat comet tours, and now it's sort of desperation on both sides as they're trying, trying, trying to keep pushing us. You can see Cluster hunting after ATGMs, and they do get it, and then this is a nice Zalas Nietzsche push. I mean, jeez. Okay, 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 okay. We'll zoom out because South Africa won't stop yelling at me, but uh, they really need to tone that down. M91, a Vihor, and some Zalaznichi. This is good. The Zalaznichi are just a cheap screen, the Vihor provides the punch, and he is getting his gun online to reasonably good effect. That's actually Bison, I wasn't really sure. It looks like Talon and Masapam are working in Echo now. They switched which sides of the field they were operating in. That should tell you that they took huge losses, by the way, because it's hard to switch when you have everything in one basket on one side already. It's a lot of expense, you want to keep it safe, all of that. Bcan 1C, by the way, able to thread the needle a second time, so I mean, that Bcan is luckier than anything I've ever seen. But, uh, I mean, this is going to be the end of the game here in less than a minute as we eke out a win over some very, very, very experienced opponents. I mean, I think they, as a team, they had more games than us by a factor of about 5 to 1, if not more. So 3,000 games, more than that even. It was really scary to deal with, but kills and losses, 10,682 kills, 8,230 losses. We got hammered. We were more than 2,000 points in the hole, and I went barely positive, but my teammates very much suffered that game, and, and I did as well. I lost, I lost so much stuff, 3,560 points and losses. Oof. But uh, it's conquest, and at the end of the day, map control wins the game. We were able to grind at a loss for 40 minutes. To eke out a win at the very end. So that's going to be all. Well, actually, no, you know what? Super Gallop, Cactus Sov, that's a nice kill. Other MVPs are probably the SASF 90, SU 7B, and a bunch of Proletary. And SASF 90 always warm my heart with their kill list because it's a lot on the ground, it's a lot in the air, it's always a good time. So, ooh, nice. Anyway, I'll keep looking through this and being happy with myself later on. This is all we've got for you guys today. So, thank you so much for hanging out. We'll see you again real soon.